Today I'm installing this Shark Bite pressure reducing valve. I'm actually running a water supply line to a flow center for a geo system to make sure that we have enough pressure if our loop is damaged and we are leaking. I want to make sure that we have water just so that we don't damage the unit in the future. So this is going to be a perfect way for me to have a certain amount of pressure coming to the geo system, have water, and that is good for the geo system to have longevity and to operate efficiently. So I'm going to be showing you how to install this pressure reducing valve made by SharkBite and run a water line to a geo system. We're going to start by showing you the tools that I'm using and the supplies and where I'm going to run that line. So hope you're ready to learn something. Before we start today's video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell. Ding! So you know what I'm doing. If you want help, you want tech support, you want to watch my members only videos, go check out my membership levels. Click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments that you joined and I've got guides for you like geothermal training guides. I can send that to you. Just let me know in the comments that you joined. You are a member and I'll give you my email and that'll lead to contact with me. You're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad and let's install this water supply line. I am gonna run that water line right into this flow center so there's going to be some PEX tubing coming down right here and going into that flow center. Locate the cold water supply line. How do we do that? The one on bottom is the cold water supply line. How do I know that? Because if you follow that T and that half inch uh, CPVC it goes to a valve, it goes down the wall and outside I'll show you what it goes to. There's a spigot. That's what that half inch line comes to, that spigot right there. That's how we'll drain the water. First things first, turn off the breaker for the well pump. Turn off the water supply coming into the house. Draining all the water out. Okay, so we got some PEX tubing. It's PEX B. It's used for cold water. It's not PEX A. PEX A is used for hot water and it can expand. This is PEX B. So. We're not using this for hot water, we're using it for cold water. So that's why I got PEX B, this is 100 foot. Got my pressure reducing valve here, Shark Bite, that's the number. Link in the description for this. If you wanna learn more or you wanna pick it up, this valve is about $80. This PEX tubing was $40. Here's my valve, there's my adjusting screw, and this is a bunch of fittings. This is the T. I'm going to come out of the three-quarter CPVC um, cold water supply line with this T. Got a couple 90s ball valve, just in case I want to shut off the water line at the flow center. And then got a female and a male. So, what else? Plumbing strap, PVC cutters, adjustable wrench, adjustable pliers, drill, quarter-inch bit bunch of screws all right there's the flow center and here is the nearest cold water supply line so I'm going to attach right there so I need to cut that line right now with my PVC cutters and here's my ladder little giant got the water line cut make sure you get a bucket there may be some residual water in there now what I'm going to do is cut a little bit more off that way I can fit the fitting in there I got one side pushed in. Now I know where to cut this. About right there. All right. Having some trouble with the T. The first fitting that I'm putting on to try to get the water supply line installed is giving me trouble. I made sure that the end of my pipe that I cut was smooth. You want to make sure it's smooth. If it's not smooth, then you may need to use some type of deburring or reaming tool. You want to make sure your PVC cutters are in good shape. I'm going to the plumbing store not only for another T, but I'm also going to get a tool that will allow me to remove that shark bite fitting instead of having to remove it by myself with a crescent wrench. You can, you can use a crescent wrench and push on one side and then pull on the other, but I, it's only me and I don't want to risk damaging the water line. So I'm going to the plumbing store, getting a really cool tool that will allow me to remove that shark bite fitting, and then also getting another T because I could not get that other side of that CPVC three quarter inch pipe to go into that T. So made sure it was smooth, but it's just not happening. Maybe a damaged uh, T or fitting. 
and that may be the case. So I'm gonna go get this uh, tool. So here we go. Just left the plumbing store and I just learned something. It was actually something I knew, but and I'd been taught, but I had actually forgotten because I haven't worked with sharp back fittings in a while. But you notice this little white piece in here. If you're working with PEX, you gotta leave this in. But if you're working with CPVC, you can take it out. And how do you take it out? Well, you can use a pair of pliers or you can use a pair of pliers. That's actually probably the best thing to do is use a pair of needle nose pliers or little bitty adjustable pliers. You can actually pull that out and sometimes that'll give you the, because the thickness of this right here kind of keeps you from being able to push that CB, CPVC all the way in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take that little white piece out when I arrive and then I'm gonna try to put it in. If it doesn't work, then I'll use this Pro Disconnect tool. And this is what it looks like and it's about $70. I'm gonna show you how to use this tool now and I'm gonna show you how hard it is to get a fitting off. So he's pulling that right now. It's not coming out, is it? Mm -mm. All right, so. Uh, can you hold that for me so check this out put this tool on here and simply squeeze it and now it comes right out and that's how you use it super simple super easy and without it you would have to use a adjustable crescent wrench and you'd have to push it up against this and then you would have to pull it out at the same time and this tool just makes it a lot easier so get one of these and save yourself some time and make your job easier. So far, this is what we got, a T into a Shark Bite 90. And we've got PEX tubing going up above the duct. You can see I've used some plumbing strap to hold it up. And this is where we're at right here. So went ahead and took out the valve that was here. And this is where I'm gonna put my pressure reducing valve, so. All right, I got some Teflon tape, I got a tape measure, and I've already adjusted the three-way valve here because it was pointing this way, and that's how we were able to read the pressure. And now I've used my ratchet and my 3 8 drive here to adjust that valve. All right, time to cut this PEX tubing and get the pressure-reducing valve installed. All right, so far I've got my mail fitting into the Street 90, three quarter, and then I've got a little piece of PEX, and then I've got my pressure reducing valve. Make sure it's, you look at the arrow, make sure it's going the right direction. Now I'm gonna put my shutoff on, and then I'm gonna turn this up so that it goes into my PEX. So first I need to cut this, because this is not gonna work, and this will keep your PEX from going all the way in to your shark bite fittings, okay? So I'm gonna do the do a recut real quick with my PVC cutters. If your pipe's not going in, make sure that the white piece inside is not damaged. If it is, you may need to get some pliers and straighten it back out. That's the problem I'm having. I got some pliers in here, I pulled this out. Now I'm gonna be very careful when I put my pipe in there, okay? So I don't want to damage it any further. I'm going to make sure it goes all the way in. Beautiful. All right. Ended up removing this T, and that is because I could not get it to work. I got to put a strap back on this line here, but we're finished. We're ready to turn the water line back on. And then we're going to set the pressure. So here we go. All right. back on oh, there we go well pump oh yeah got plenty of water now before I turn the water on I'm going to install my pressure gauge because we're gonna want to set that pressure and right now it says almost 40 now I'm going to turn the water on and I'm going to adjust my valve now. Yeah, right there. Looks like pressure is going up. 
See that? Let's see what this valve's set for. Always read the manual. There's a few things we need to look at, like this right here, outlet pressure range. We can set this valve from 10 to 70 PSI or 71 to 150. So 10 to 70. And let's see over here. It says to adjust the outlet pressure, loosen the lock nut, then turn the adjusting screw counterclockwise to decrease the pressure and clockwise to increase the pressure. Retighten the lock nut after adjustment. So looks like we can adjust the lock nut here. And we're going to go ahead and do this so that you know. So adjustable wrench. Loosen that lock nut, and then we can clockwise to increase, counterclockwise to decrease. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go here and check the pressure. Pressure is almost 50. We're going to adjust this right here, clockwise, like this, just one turn, and then we're going to see what our pressure is. So, pressure went up to over 50. And really, I think that's good enough pressure right there. So, I'm going to actually loosen this a little bit. Well, what am I doing here? Sorry, guys. With the phone, it's kind of hard to... I'm going to adjust that back. And then tighten the lock nut. But now you know how to adjust it. This is a really nice valve. It makes it easy using the packs. I was already going to use packs. Hate it's beside the light switch, but really don't have a choice. I don't want to run it out here, and I can't put it over here because you can't really get to it. So it is what it is. Now, the only thing I would add to this is let me show you. The customer had a valve. So what I did was I got this little shark bite fitting three-quarter to a female and then I got a T. So I could put this in the line and he could measure the pressure daily and just monitor it. So that's one thing I would add to this project. Got my straps back in, so we're in good shape. I think that's it. That's how you add a water supply line to a geo system, to the flow center. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you know how to install a water supply line on a flow center for a geothermal system now. If you want or need more geothermal training, I've got a few videos on my members only playlist. Go check those videos out. I've got a geothermal training guide I can send you. Just click the join button, become a member. Let me know in the comments, say I joined. I'll give you my email and then I'll send you that ge geothermal training guide. Before you leave, hit the like button, subscribe and smash that bell. Ding, so you know what I'm doing. If you want tech support, remember, I'm here to help. You know what to do. I've got different membership levels from being just my friend to really supporting me, level three, getting to see my members only videos, level four, level five, having my phone number, level six, becoming a client and being able to have a time every week that I talk to you and help you through what it is you need help with. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.